Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. I was just sitting out here enjoying this lovely weather, reading books on my Kindle, and I thought, you know what? With school starting back, well, in some areas, school's already back. In some areas, it's fixing to start back. But I thought this would be a perfect time for us to brush up on our Kindle skills. So I'll tell you what, y'all go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I'm going to go inside, teach it. Well, I'm going to read another chapter first, maybe two chapters. Then I'm going to go inside and teach a class, get all set up. I'll get set up on another camera so I can show you my Kindle. And we'll go over a list of all of my favorite tips and tricks for the Kindle. Some old tricks that we've talked about and some new tricks that you might not know. So y'all give me a few minutes to get some things done and meet me inside. All right, y'all, I did some teaching, I did some riding, I did some yoga in, so now we're ready to do some kindling. But before we do, I gotta show you what I just got in the mail. Well, I just got it off the front porch and I'm so excited. Now, you gotta promise to be surprised when I show y'all this in a book haul in a couple of weeks, but, and I just slid it out of the box. So I'm just looking at it for the first time. Look what I got. It's the, so remember the inheritance games? This is the first book in a new, in like a spinoff series about, and honestly, I don't even know why I bought it because it's about that annoying girl in the inheritance games that I lost all patience with about two books ago. But remember, well, I don't want to say anything about what she did, but she ends up in a situation where she's now like running games that people can win and do things. So this is the first book in that series called The Grandest Game. So I know nothing about it except that Avery, is that her name? So look how pretty it is. So that's that, just got this out of the mail. Not at all what we're talking about. So let me set that aside and y'all let's jump into this thing. So Kindles, I told you we're gonna talk about all the Kindle tips and tricks you need to know. So I am gonna use a paper white to show you what I'm showing you. Now there are fancier Kindles like the Kindle Oasis that has the page turn buttons and that when you turn it, it'll like reorient itself. You don't have to mess with like landscape and portrait and stuff in that one. We're not gonna use that one because the things that I wanna show you are true, I believe across all Kindle devices and they're definitely true across the, like the regular paper white, the, signature paper white or whatever like the uppity paper white is called and that $99 sort of intro level Kindle that you can get. So all the things that we're going to look at are true for like all three of the like regular model Kindles. So let's just jump in and start talking about these things. Y'all I have a list so I'm going to try to keep from going down rabbit holes but you know how it gets when you talk about Kindles. So let's get started. So first you might notice that the cover of my Kindle is the cover of my book. And this is because I have, let me wake her up. Let me take off, I have a, y'all go on ahead and judge me. I have a, um, oh, I was in here messing around with things. Let me get out of that. I have the like remote control page turner on my Kindle. Cause y'all, I'm not sure if this is bougie or lazy, but I have you covered on both of them. So yeah, I have a remote control to turn pages on the Kindle. Anyway, let's get out of that. So you can either have the ad supported Kindle or the not ad supported. This is non ad supported. So I have my, I have it set so that the book cover comes up when my Kindle goes to sleep. And y'all that's super easy to set. All you have to do is go into this menu up here, go into settings. And from there, you just go into screen and brightness and show cover on lock screen. I have that on. If I had it off, then it would just show a screensaver. Now, because mine isn't ad supported, it's not going to show ads either way. But if you have the ad supported one, I think right here it'll give you the option like you can click a button and go in and pay like, I don't know, $20, $25, however much it is to get the ads removed and then it'll give you this option. But y'all, I have done this on more than one occasion. Just go on your, like I do it on the computer, just go to Amazon on your computer, get 
in the you got to go to the live chat. So get in the live chat with an Amazon representative and just be super nice and ask them if they can take the ads off of your Kindle device for you. And sometimes like I've done it where they make me like wait a while and I have to say a bunch of nice things, but then they take it off for free. So it saves you 20 bucks. So that's a way to have your book cover show up when your Kindle goes to sleep. So, all right, let's get into this. Let's talk first about the appearance of the Kindle, what it looks like when you're reading. One quick little thing to talk about is changing font size. So you can change your font size on the fly by either pinching to make it smaller or like sweeping your fingers out to make it bigger. And you can see the little like font size slider comes up. And from here you can click to hone it in to whatever you want it to be. But like if you have maybe a textbook or something that you're working on on your Kindle and you have a, a photo or something like a picture and there's a caption and it's teeny tiny little letters and you want to make it bigger so you can read it and then go back to your normal reading size, that's a great way to do that is you just zoom out and zoom in with your fingers. So that's one thing you can do to just quickly change the look of your Kindle. But while we're talking about looks of your screen while you're reading, one thing that y'all I absolutely have to have and I miss it, Let's talk about it and then we're going to talk about what a goober smooch I am. So the clock at the top of the screen. We're going to be in this menu for a little while, but this, this double A menu, if you click on that, you get a whole bunch of options. And one of them, you can go into this more menu. And one of the very first things you see is show clock while reading. And if you toggle that on, it puts the little clock up in the middle of your screen and y'all I've honestly been known when I'm sitting on the couch reading an actual like physical book to look up at the top of the page of the book to see what time it is because I'm so used to having a clock at the top of my Kindle but I know I shouldn't necessarily have told that story but anyway so let's talk about the things that we can do inside of this again I'm going to go back to it and show you where it is if you just touch the top of your screen Unfortunately, you know what? I'm going to go to a page that doesn't have a highlight at the top. If you just touch the top of the screen, you get this menu. And that double A puts you in this where you can control a bunch of the sort of details of the appearance of your screen. One of the things that you can change, and y'all, I think this is so huge, is your font. So you can pick different fonts, like they call it font family. I'm a Bookerly girl. Y'all, if I take it out of Bookerly, it is going to seriously give me hives. But of course, there are other fonts in here that people like. Open Dyslexic is a great one. If you or someone that you know struggles with dyslexia or other information processing challenges, Open Dyslexic might be a good font to try. It drives me crazy. Like it literally makes my eyeballs itch when I try to read in this font. But you'll notice that like, look at the D here. Let me make it bigger. I'm not just showing off my pinch and zoom right now, but like, so if you think, and we're not going to get way deep into the weeds here, but if you think about the fact that the letter D, the letter P, the letter B, and in some fonts, the letter Q, they're all just that same, like stick with a circle, but flipped different ways. Well, to the neurotypical reader, when you see those letters flipped different ways, the positioning tells your brain that it's different sounds. So it graphs in your brain to different sounds. Well, to some people with information processing challenges, all of this stick with a circle looks the same. Well, if you look very closely in open dyslexic, you see that the D, the P, and the, there was a B in here somewhere, the D, the P, and the B aren't exactly the same. They have slight differences, and that makes this font much easier for somebody with Inform well, for some people with information processing challenges, it makes it easy for them to comprehend the text, like easier for them to read, quite frankly. So that's a great one. There are other really great texts in here. You can also download custom, I didn't mean great text, I meant great fonts. You can download custom fonts, and we'll talk about that last, y'all, because you need to do that on your computer. So I'll take you upstairs, we'll get on the computer, I'll show you very, very quickly how to do that. But for now, I just wanna go through things we can do. See, I had to put it back in book early. Things we can do just on the Kindle. So you can change your font, 
You can change your font size in here, of course. So this is just size. And you can change the boldness of the font. So look at, and one thing I really like about this is it changes in real time. So watch as I change these settings. Look at the thickness of my letters. You see how you can change not just the size, but the thickness in here. So again, I'm not gonna get all up in the weeds, all special ed, reading, teachery on you, but that can really affect how your brain processes information. And if you or a reader that you love has challenges with processing information, this can be really powerful. So there's that. Layout is the same kind of thing. You can change the layout in here. Let me get on a normal page so you can see when we, you know what? Let's get into a different book that I haven't highlighted the bejesus out of. Let's go into, where should we go? Let's go to the false prints. Because y'all, this is a book for middle grades readers, so I know there are not gonna be any naughty words that are gonna jump out at us. So, no, we don't need to go to the last page we read. Um, although, okay. What you just saw, if you saw it, was down at the bottom, it just asked me if I wanted to go to the last page read, which I can do it from here and tell it to sync. If you switch between Kindle devices or like read on your Kindle and read on your phone, your Kindles will sync up. So you don't have to worry about remembering that you were on page 342 when you stopped reading. Your Kindles will sync up for you. I'm, I'm so down rabbit holes already. What were we talking about? Oh, layout. So let's go back into the layout. So now that we have like a regular page, you can see better, I think. Margins. So look, I use like full margins. I want as many letters as possible all the way across the page. But for some readers that just does not work. Like having that much information coming at you all at once is like just absolute like information overload. So you can adjust what that looks like on your screen. You can also adjust your line spacing. And because I've done that, that's knocked us into another. But see, so for somebody with information processing or even just a reluctant reader, a page that looks like this is much less intimidating than, oh, I did go to the end of the book, look what I did. We're out of pages. I don't own that book, hang on. That's all right, there we go. A page that looks like this is much less intimidating than a page that looks like I don't know if I have my theme set in here, I do. A page that looks like this. So just something to keep in mind, especially if you have, maybe if you have a reluctant younger reader or a reluctant any kind of reader, these are just some things that you can change to help them be more comfortable reading on the Kindle. I know we're coming right out of those weeds, y'all relax. So that's layout. You may have noticed that I have a my faves theme. So you can, once you set up your theme, so let's say I am gonna have, let's make my font a little bigger. I'm just gonna change something so that it'll have something to save. If I go back into that, go over to themes, now you see custom theme is here. So it's gonna give me the option to save current settings. So I can save that, I can give it a title, we'll just call it new save it. And now y'all, this is great if multiple people use your Kindle, like if you have littles running around and different littles use your Kindle, save different themes with their names on it. As soon as they sit down and want to read on your Kindle, go into theme, hit their name and Bob's your uncle. It's set up just like they like it. It's a great way to personalize the reading experience for your little readers. All right, so let's get out of there. Oh wait, let me show you one more thing. I think it's in that menu. Layout, yes. Um, do we do alignment? So you can, this is justification, right? You can either ju fully justify, which I don't know if you're gonna see it. Yeah, you can see it in this, in the, like the full paragraph. You can fully justify or not. Uh, we did spacing, oh, and orientation. So this is what I was talking about. Some of the fancier Kindles will adjust orientation for you, but like if I turn this sideways, now my letters are just sideways. And I'm opening all kinds of menus, touch and stuff. So, same kind of dealio. And depending on the book, you might want to be reading 
in landscape. So you just switch it and then if you're done or if it makes your brain itch like it's making my brain itch right now, you can just switch her back. So that's all in that double A menu up in your settings. A couple of things in here. I think it's in here. Let's look. We talked about the clock. Oh, reading progress. You can decide how you want to see your reading progress. I have page numbers set, but you can just click and it'll change between the different. Can y'all even see that? You know what? Let's go into the menu because I don't know if you can see it that well at the bottom. So you can choose between pages in the book, so whatever page you're on, time left in the book, time left in the chapter, or like the there are number locations, so your number location in the book. So I leave mine on page and book because I'm not an animal. I'm kidding. Like some people like to know how much time they have left. So what it does is the Kindle will learn your reading speed and it'll tell you like, let's see, we're almost at the very end of this book, I think. But it says, yes, yeah, six minutes left in book. Now, one thing I can do is I think I can do it from here. If I go in and type, and y'all, this is case sensitive. So if I wanna reset my, like the reading time counter, if I go in and type semicolon, capital, and then you do capital R reading, capital T time, capital R reset. And now you see at the bottom, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it says learning reading time. So now it's going to lose its mind because I'm not going to actually be, well, the book will just be open. So it'll be like, what are you doing on that page for an hour? But it'll relearn your reading time. So let's say you're reading like some fluffy romance book and you read it super quickly, but then you go to read like some, I don't know, Tolstoy or something, and you're reading more slowly and you want it to learn your reading time so it can gauge how long you have to the end of a chapter or the end of the book or something. So that's a way that you can have the Kindle relearn your reading time so that it'll be more accurate. I know that it's not really necessary, but I think some people like to know that, like to be able to gauge where they are and how much longer they have to go. So that's how you can reset that in your Kindle. So we talked about, we inadvertently stumbled across how the Kindles will sync up. Like if you're reading on one Kindle, then you go to another Kindle or you're reading in your Kindle app on your phone and then you go to read on a Kindle, it'll sync to your last read page. Well, Whisper Sync when you're on Audible will do the same thing. So like if you're reading a book and you're listening to it on Audible as well, if you listen to it for a while and then you open the same book in Kindle, it'll go to where you left off in Audible and vice versa. The If you've been reading it and then you pull it up in Audible to listen to it, Audible will find where you left off reading. So that's pretty cool. It's called Whisper Sync. It's how the different devices hand off your book to one another. Let's talk about learning words. So there is a, again, this is a middle grades book. So I'm just going to pick a word to look up. Let's look up the word celebrate. So if you just long press on a word, it looks it up for you. It'll give you a dictionary definition and then a Wikipedia entry and a translation. So if it's a foreign word, like if it's, you know, you're reading and a French word comes up and you're like, I literally have no idea what that means. Often it will give you the translation so you can tell it like if I want to translate celebrate from English to I don't know if I I don't think this is going to work because I don't have any other dictionaries in here but let's see what it does. Oh it did. It's super smart. So you can do translations. You can highlight from here. I wasn't going to get into high. You know what? Let's not get into highlights right now. We'll come back to that because I want to talk about looking up words. So let me delete my highlight and go back to my looking up the word. So I've long pressed and looked up this word. Now, so I looked it up, I know what the word celebrate means. So now I can go into this top menu, go over here to the three little dots, and just go to see vocabulary builder. If I click on that, these are all of the words that I've looked up. Now y'all, some of these are probably gonna be shady, so don't judge me, but so let's say I want to practice my words. Did y'all see at the bottom? There's flashcards and I can go through and it gives me the word, the how it was used. 
I can ask for the definition, gives me the definition, and then once I've learned it, I can mark it as mastered so it comes out of my stack and I don't keep practicing it. This is amazing. So many of y'all know I'm a teacher. This is so powerful for young learners, for, well, for I feel like for all learners, but if you've got, and I'm not gonna go back down this rabbit hole, but if you have a reader who is struggling or who's resistant to read, and they can be sitting there and reading in a room with other readers who don't struggle, and they come across the word celebrate, and they don't know what it means, and they don't have to get up and get a dictionary or ask for help or just skip it and not know it, they're able to take responsibility for their own learning. Look up that word on their Kindle. Nobody sees them do it. Nobody sees them pull out a dictionary. They don't have to skip the word. And then later, if you can get them to do it, to go back and look through the flashcards, or if you get on their device and go and look at the words that they looked up so that you can help them with them, Y'all, so powerful, so, so powerful. But anyway, I use this all the time. Okay, I don't look up the word celebrate because I know that one, but it is not uncommon for me to look up words when I'm reading. And I mean, I wouldn't even necessarily stop and look them up, but the Kindle makes it so easy. So let's move on. So that's the long press and look up and vocabulary builder. Let's talk for a minute about one other thing. While I have you down this rabbit hole, there is an option, I believe it's in more. Now, this is one you might have to work on your readers to get them to do this, but it's called WordWise. Now, if you turn WordWise on, here's what it does. I should go into a harder text because what WordWise does is when it comes across a word that it thinks a reader is going to find challenging, it gives them hints at what that word means. Y'all, I should have used WordWise when I read Project Hail Mary because I didn't understand half of what this man was talking about. There's, look at this. See? So it get like airlock. It says room with controlled pressure. So it gives you just little hints about what you're reading. Now, I knew what an airlock was, y'all quit judging me. But if you have a reader who struggles, or if you're just reading something hard, for heaven's sake, if you're reading a book about a dude floating around in space and you're not like all sciency, it will help you understand things. I don't love the fact that it's only like seven lines on a page, but this is a great example. This is like a perfect way to look at this. That you can see why it does that, right? Because it puts the little hints in between the lines. Fantastic. So, so powerful. If you can get your struggling readers to use this, y'all, you just opened up the entire freaking world to them because now this is scaffolding. This is, okay, I'm getting all excited and I need to calm down, but this is built in scaffolding, right? This is the Kindle giving them that extra little bit of help to allow them to read a text. Me, reading a sciencey book, seriously? It gives me that extra little bit of scaffolding I need to understand the science that I wouldn't have understood had I not had the Kindle here whispering things in my ear while I'm reading. And again, for your struggling readers sitting in a classroom of neurotypical readers, if they have this so they're able to understand these things and one not have to ask for help because 99 times out of 100, they are not going to ask for help. They're just going to skip right over it, not understand it, not get the information and miss out on all of that knowledge. So they can sit there and read amongst their neurotypical friends and not look any different and still get all of that knowledge, y'all. That right there is worth the price of admission. So I'm gonna climb down off my soapbox and we're gonna move on, but please just bear in mind that WordWise is, between WordWise and the Vocabulary Builder, very, very powerful. I have a whole video, by the way, I'm gonna link it here, I can't believe I haven't mentioned it yet, on Helping struggling readers read, like that's my jam. I'm a licensed special ed teacher and that was like my focus. That's what I did was helping, helping struggling readers read. So a link here to a video about how if, if you struggle, if you have a reader who struggles, tools within the Kindle that you can use to, to help sort of ameliorate those struggles. Now let's move on. Let me get this out of WordWise. I keep, you know what, let's, in a minute, we're gonna talk about that top menu that I keep slamming us into. I'm so excited, y'all. I cannot even work this Kindle right now. I got myself so keyed up over WordWise. All right, let me turn that off. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's turn that off. And then let's talk about some things. 
So we're back in that more menu. We should have just gone through this whole thing at one time. Page turn animations. I kind of love these because they kind of make you feel like you're, re look, it, it's doing it funky because I have so many highlights. But instead of like just flashing from one page to the other page, it kind of gives you the feel like it's turning pages. It does use up your battery a little bit faster, but whatever. So if you're trying to conserve your battery, maybe don't do that one. But so um, this, so, okay, we're not getting all up into the weeds. Let's get out of here. That's why we didn't do the whole more menu because we're not getting into weeds today. So let's go ahead and talk about this swipe down menu real quick. I just mentioned saving your battery and maybe not having a page turn animations on. If you're really trying to save your battery, turn on airplane mode. That turns off Bluetooth so that your Kindle is not like trying to sync with the mothership and keep all of your like highlights and all of that up to date. So just bear in mind, if you switch devices, it's not gonna be up to date, right? Like your pages and your highlights aren't gonna have caught up, but it'll, it'll give you a few extra days of battery. This is also where you can change your brightness and your warmth. So this, the brightness one is your front light and the warmth is the warmth, like the orangeness of the light. And this you can set on a schedule. So you can tell at what time you want it to turn off and on. I don't do that. I actually had my warmth off because this is my bedroom Kindle. So I read it in the dark in the bed. So all that I have on is the brightness and then I read for a while and I fall asleep and it turns itself, it, it puts itself to sleep at night. But the, so I leave my warmth off. But the Kindle that I use, my couch Kindle, I do, I, I do not have the schedule on. I just let it like warm up and cool off with the ambient light. And some people complain that it's not like all that, I don't know, responsive. I like it, but that's in there. So whatever you do you, but that's in that swipe down menu. You can actually get to it a few different places, but that's the easiest. While we're up here, this is probably Captain Obvious, but you can bookmark. Now, I know you're like, dude, all you gotta do is like turn your Kindle off and you turn it back on and you're at the same page. I know, but what if say Rocky does something super cute on this page and you want to remember it? So you bookmark it and then, wait, did that bookmark? So you bookmark it and then you go ahead a few pages and you want to bookmark this page and you can see that you bookmarked the other page. So you bookmark this page too. And then you're like, wait, what did I bookmark? So you do this and you're like, what was on that page? And you can click it and it'll show you like a little preview of the page and then you can go back. So it's a really slick way to navigate if you're about that party, it's up to you. But sometimes bookmarks can be really useful just depending on what kind of book you're reading and what you're reading it for. Notes and let's, you know what, let's just go ahead and talk about the big old elephant in the room. Let's talk about notes and highlights. So I'm gonna get rid of these bookmarks because they're gonna aggravate me. All right, so like I said, I've highlighted the blue blazes out of this book because it's one, I love it. And it's my book club book. So in order to highlight, I don't know if there's anywhere that I haven't highlighted that I can show you. It's super simple. All you have to do is hold down your finger and drag and then let go and you have a highlight. Now in the more menu, there's the option to turn the highlight menu on or off. That's this. So when you highlight, you have the option to undo, add a note, share, or do these other things. If you turn off the highlight menu, you can get rid of those options. So you do a bunch of highlights. Let me get rid of that highlight. So now if we go to this top menu, the in chapters, so y'all know this will give you a list of chapters, right? So in there, we can see popular highlights. So that's the what a bunch of people have highlighted in the book or like people in the past have highlighted. Now, let's see how this does because there's a lot of highlights in here. So if you go to the notebook paper page, <laughs> notes and highlights are loading. But what it'll do is it'll load all of your notes and highlights here and you see this little arrow thing up here, it'll let you export them. So you can email them out to yourself And once you click that little button, 
you can have it send notes and highlights to the email address of your Kindle account. So it'll send it to whatever email address is associated with your Kindle account. I don't want to do that. So let's get out of there. And go back. So here it's fine. <laughs> finally got all my highlights together. So it'll show you all the highlights in your book and you can navigate back to the pages that you highlighted from here. So let's get out of here. So that's notes and highlights. I keep saying notes and highlights. So do we even talk about notes? So you can add a note, again, long press, and you get this little note option. And you can type in a note. I'm just gonna type note, tell it to save. And you can see right there, shows you there's a little note. Click that and your note comes up. I could tell it all notes, but I don't have any other notes in this book. And it takes me back to that notes and highlights page. So you can add notes like that right into your text. So that's notes and highlights. All right, so while we're talking about getting information off your screen, do y'all know you can take a screenshot? So if you touch opposing corners, like I'm gonna do upper right and bottom left. See how it flashed just then? Took a screenshot. You can do it the other up, there you go. You can do upper left and bottom right too. So it's just opposite corners. Now there's, you'll see when we go to put in our custom font, there's a folder called screenshots and that's where those will be. So yeah, you can take a quick screenshot of your screen. If there's a bunch of information on there that you want to get off or for whatever reason you want to take a screenshot. Just a couple more quickies y'all and then we'll go upstairs and I'll show you how to do the custom font and then we're out. So one thing that is not a quickie, but you can, make your own custom screen saver. Like I have, where's mine? I have this one. So that when my Kindle's asleep, that's what comes up. I'll link here to how to do those. There are a few steps to it. It's really not difficult, but there's kind of a few steps. So you can do a custom screen saver. You can also put, let me go back into a book. You can also put a passcode on your Kindle. It's super simple. So just go back into that menu go into settings and device options, and then it's something about privacy and security. Set a device pin and manage your data sharing. There you go. Oh, while we're talking about sharing, so there you can set up the device pin in there, but while we're talking about sharing, you can share books with other people in your like Amazon household. So we're still in that same menu. If you go into your account, Go into Amazon household and inside that Amazon household, it's gonna give you the option to set up book sharing with other adults or with kids. So that's a really great option for sharing books. Another great option is checking books out from the library. You know that you can check out books, at least in the United States, you can check out books on the Libby app and on Overdrive and read them very simply on your Kindle. So that's a great option for getting books as well. I have heard, now I haven't done this, but I've heard that if you've checked out a library book onto your Kindle and you get that like your book is due back in a couple of days warning and you're not quite done reading it yet, you can ride a little dirty put your Kindle into airplane mode and your book won't automatically return to the library until you take it out of airplane mode. So if you need to keep it that extra couple of days, maybe that's a way to do it. Like I said, I haven't done this, but I've heard and read that that's an option. Speaking of books, let's go into, I think y'all saw my library. If you have far too many books on your Kindle and you're like, what am I doing with all of these books? You can organize them into collections. So you can see right here, create a collection. All you do is type in the name, hit create collection, and then just start sorting books into collections. A really easy way to sort them into collections is to do it on your iPad. iPads make it super easy to do that. The um, Amazon app or the, the Kindle app on your iPad is super friendly for sorting books. Now, if I go into my library, I can show you, I have a bunch of collections. So instead of viewing all, I can view collections. And here are my books sorted into collections. And let's say I want to read some contemporary fiction, go into my contemporary fiction folder and there they are. Or maybe I'm in the mood for some horror. There we go. Now, 
I can always just go back to seeing everything. If I don't know what I want to read and I just want to sort of flounder through all my books, just go back to all and they're all there. So don't worry that once you sort them into collections that you won't see them anymore and maybe you'll forget where you sorted something and not be able to find it. It is not a problem at all. You can still sort them different ways even when they're in collections. A couple of other things, the Kindle Paperwhite and I think the $99 Kindle, but I'm not sure, the Kindle Paperwhite for sure will play audiobooks. Now, it doesn't have a speaker, so you need to have some kind of Bluetooth thing hooked up to it, but it'll play your Audible books for you. And I've had people ask, like, why would you even bother? I prefer listening to Audible books on my phone. I feel you. But for one thing, some people like the sort of just step down, less techy, less sort of high tech feel of listening to it on the Kindle. And some folks, I've had people comment that they work in high tech, high security environments where they can take in a Kindle and if they have like a book or an audiobook loaded onto their Kindle, they can take that in, but they can't take in their phone. So there are definitely use cases where being able to listen to a book on a Kindle, or like if you have a book downloaded for your kiddo, right? And you're, I would be much more comfortable handing this to a kid in the back of the car than my phone. So there, I think there definitely are use cases for listening to a book on your Kindle. And while we're on it, Alexa will read you books too. All you have to do, especially I know on, on my phone, all I have to do is say, Alexa reading, I'm not gonna say it right now because she'll start reading right now, but say her name and then read me my Kindle book and she'll pick up reading where you left off in your book. Two more things and then we're going upstairs. One is X-ray. So X-ray is a feature in not all books have it, but many books have it. And it will help you sort of navigate through your book. So X-Ray gives you sort of important tips about characters, about settings, about different things in your book. So you can go in and like if you forget who a character is, you can look that character up in X-Ray or terms. It gives you important terms from the book, images. So whatever is important in your book, or whatever I guess your author or the editor feels is important, you can go in and find that in X-Ray. You can also, it says nothing to do with X-Ray, you can change the name of your Kindle. If you go into Settings, Device Options, and then Device Info, right here the first thing is Device Name, it gives you the option to change your device name, which is nice if you have more than one Kindle, because then when you pull them up on the Amazon app, you know which Kindle you're looking at. So like if you need to change something or add something to a Kindle, you know which one it is. So that's really nice. You can go in and change your device name. And while we're in here, y'all, this is where you can find your send to Kindle email address. It's under the same settings menu under your account and right down here, send to Kindle email address. So if you ever want to send like a PDF to your Kindle, just send it to your send to Kindle email address. But y'all, we're not getting into that here. We're, oh, we're almost done. Last, last, last thing. In the bottom menu, there's a navigation bar. So if you just swipe up from the bottom, you see you get this sort of preview of the page that you're looking at. So you can go forwards and back from here, or this other thing that looks like kind of like a bunch of suitcases, it allows you to navigate quickly through the pages. So that can be exceptionally useful. So that's it. All right, y'all, let me get off here. Let me get upstairs and get a setup with a camera on the computer, and I'll show you how to download custom fonts onto your Kindle. All right, so I'll see you upstairs. All right, y'all, we have finally made it to the office. I thought of a couple of more things that I wanted to tell you. I know I told you I had one more, but I forgot to mention that there is a browser on the Kindle. Now it's slow and it's creaky and you probably aren't gonna wanna use it to do many things, but I just felt like I need to mention it because I do believe that the Kindle can be very, very useful for young readers, for resistant readers, but 
if maybe if you're the parent of a teenager and you maybe have a shady Sadie who you're trying to limit their screen time, limit their access to the internet, and you have them reading on a Kindle, know that there is a browser on here. And if they come to you and say, oh, but mom, I need to be on the interwebs to be able to use my Kindle. No, no, shady Sadie, you most certainly do not. Mom of the shady Sadie, all that you need to do is download their book onto the Kindle. Make sure that you have whatever dictionaries they need down Load it onto the Kindle so they can still do that long press word lookup. And then you can either put it in airplane mode, which of course they can take it out of, or like if you have, here's what you do, set your interwebs password to a word, like if they don't know what the password is, write it in cursive, stick it up on the fridge and they'll never figure it out. Of course I'm kidding, but I just say all that to say that they don't need to actively be on the internet to be able to use their Kindle. So download the book, download the dictionaries, and then they don't need internet access to fully use their Kindle. So be aware there is a browser on here. It's slow and it's creaky, but I know some shady Sadies who would use that browser to get on there and talk to their friends when they shouldn't ought to be. So there is a browser and if you use a Kindle Fire. You can, while you're reading a book, if you have the Audible and the Kindle book, you can have the Audible book reading to you while you're reading the Kindle book and it will highlight the words as you go along as you're reading, which is a powerful, powerful tool for struggling readers. But it's also nice, like if you're reading along and you're not necessarily keeping up, or if you want to push your reading speed, if you set that audible reading speed to a little bit faster than you're comfortable with, that's sort of a way to scaffold yourself, right? To push yourself to read a little bit faster. So that's a great way to build reading speed. So just know that you can read on a Kindle Fire, not the paper white. These don't highlight as you're reading, but you can use a Kindle Fire read the Kindle book, have the Audible playing at the same time, and it'll highlight the words as you're reading. So, all right, that's that. Let's jump on the computer and let me show you how to download custom fonts, and then I'm out. All right, y'all, this seriously could not be any simpler. So I've plugged in my Kindle. You can see it's plugged into my interwebs. And I have this, like it tells me that, the, that it's plugged into something. And you can see on the on my screen, I double clicked on my Kindle, which is over there. I double clicked on it and here are the files. And while we're here, you can see right here, the screenshots file. Those are the screenshots that I've taken on my Kindle. So I can like drag these off of here or do whatever with them. Anyway, it's not what I want. What I want is fonts. So there's my fonts folder. And all I have to do is I'm gonna just open a random fonts folder that I have on the interwebs. And here's a font that I don't think I have on this Kindle. So I've downloaded this from just some free font like source on the internet. I'm gonna drag it over and just drop it into my fonts folder. And now, oh, it got a little stacked up. You can see it's right here in my fonts folder. So that y'all, that's literally all there is to it. So now if I, click out of all of these, eject out of here, which you can't see. So let me eject out of here and hang on, I'll be right back. So I ejected my Kindle, like you can see now, it's just back on the normal page. If I go to that top menu where that double A thing is like we did before, if I go into my font, fonts and then font family, where is it? Oh, there it is. That's that new, I don't even know what font this is, y'all. I just like had it stuck. Honestly, I, I keep that weird font in there so that I can demo dropping it onto things because I know I'm not going to have it anywhere on anything because this is what it looks like. Y'all, who would read in that? But anyway, so that's it. That's all you have to do to add custom fonts to your Kindle. And y'all, those are all of my tips and tricks to get you ready to go back to school with your new or old Kindle. What am I missing, y'all? I know there are some out there that I didn't talk about. Let us know in the comments, y'all. What are your favorite Kindle tips and tricks? Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we're most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.